Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be learning about multiple recursion calls. Till now you have seen recursion where we had only single uh, recursion calls. Basically, we were learning something as there was a function, and inside this function, only a single function like was called again. So over here we will be learning something of this pattern where probably we will have a function. and there will be multiple function calls yes this is two times so the function is called twice or thrice or four times so you'll be learning multiple recursion calls now generally in all the problems that we will be solving there might be two times three times four times and so on so in this video i'll be teaching you how to how to have uh, two multiple recursion calls and going forward you will be seeing problems like n queen and other problems where you'll see multiple not only two n recursion calls being happening inside a function okay so to understand multiple recursion calls the best example is doing the fibonacci number now what is fibonacci number let's first understand basically uh, the first couple of fibonacci numbers are 0 and 1 so the next fibonacci number will be last one and the previous last so 0 plus 1 will give you 1 And the next Fibonacci number will be this one plus this one. That's two. Next Fibonacci number will be this one and this two, three. Next Fibonacci number will be this two and this three plus five. Next Fibonacci number will be this three and this five, which is definitely eight. Next will be thirteen. Then it will be twenty-one, thirty-four, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, assume I call this as the zeroth Fibonacci, first Fibonacci. Second Fibonacci, third Fibonacci, and so on. I call it like this. Now the question is very straightforward. You will be given a problem. You will be given an n, and you need to write a recursive function. Yes, you need to write a recursive function which tells you which is the nth Fibonacci number. For an example, I say f of three, so which is the third Fibonacci number two. If I say f of four, that's three. If I say f of five, that's five. So you have to give me the nth Fibonacci number. Now, generally, what did I say? How did this five come up? If this is f of, let's say this is f of five, this f of five was indeed what f of four plus f of three. That is what this f of five was all about. f of four plus f of three, which is the previous one and the one before that. On adding them, we were getting the f of five. Correct. So. Generally, you could have uh, done this uh, easily using for loop. You could be like, uh, we can probably write f of zero as zero, f of one as uh, one, and then you can easily run a loop from two till n, and you can write f of i equal to f of i minus one plus f of i minus two. It's a very simple, uh, simple linear version that you can write using iterative for loop. Correct. But obviously, we are not here to solve Fibonacci number. over here we have to uh, we have to learn recursion and that is where uh, something like fibonacci plays a very important part because it's going to teach you recursion in a very classical fashion so we did learn that in order to find f of n we have to know f of n minus 1 and we have to know f of n minus 2 correct that is something we did learn so in case our function takes n we know one thing for sure if n is Anything great, uh, lesser than equal to one. If it is n is zero, then the answer is zero because the zero Fibonacci number is zero. If n is one, the first Fibonacci number is one. We definitely know that, correct? So can I say in this case I will be returning n? I think there is no doubt in this. Going across, what is uh, Fibonacci of n? We can be like Fibonacci of n is nothing but. f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 without any doubt this is the answer because if i'm looking for fibonacci of n if i'm looking for fibonacci of n i have to know uh, f of n minus 1 i have to know f of n minus 2 there's absolutely no doubt in it but how does this work uh, if we call a couple of uh, recursive functions do they go simultaneously how does this work in recursion so let's understand this by again taking a very very simple example so what i'll do is i'll re uh, rewrite it to basically explain you how this works so assume uh, i say last is f of n minus 1 
I say a uh, second last is equal to f of n minus 2 and then I say why don't you return last plus second last okay so if I write something like this and uh, then I simply write a main where in the main I say that okay let's uh, presumably let's take n equal to uh, 4 that should make sense and uh, we can say print Fibonacci of 4 what if we write something like this print Fibonacci of 4 and fi print Fibonacci of n so basically this is going to call this guy with a value 4 this will not be executed because the value of n is 4 now if you carefully observe there are a couple of recursion calls so one is this while the other one is this do they go simultaneously no first this guy will go yes first this guy will go come back then this guy will go and then come back so it happens uh, what, what to say line by line like whichever recursion call is made first it will go and call it and after that it will go for the next one that is how recursion works right to understand this in deep let's uh, let's just take this example so over here I can say this call will go and if this call goes this will call f of 3 because n minus 1 for this 4 is nothing but 3 correct so f of 3 is made now if f of 3 is made again the base case will not be executed let's understand the base case is not executed and again the last call this time is f of 2 correct because minus 1 the second last is definitely f of 1 and then you are returning last plus second last so remember this recursion call is being done so our stack space will wait over here like we will be waiting at this line we will not be going beneath this line we will be waiting the stack space uh, will keep this function saying that okay i'm gonna wait till this doesn't gives me this answer perfect now f of 3 will be like okay this is not executed f of 2 will be executed so again f of 2 will be executed and it will be like let's call f of 2 so the if line is not executed last will be f of what will be last f of 1 what will be second last f of 0 correct so and then uh, they can return last plus second last so if i'm calling last f of 1 will be called so whenever f of 1 is called if n lesser than equal to 1 gets executed you need to understand if n lesser than equal to 1 gets executed and it returns the value n so this basically gives you a value 1 because that's how it is and you can say instead of f of 1 now you can write 1 so one of the recursion calls was done and it did return you 1 now this recursion call will go and again call one more same function the same function in the memory but this time it will pass n as 0 again the if n lesser than equal to 1 will be executed and this will return a 0 so this guy is returned as 0 so I can write second last as 0 thereby last plus second last this is 1 this is 0 plus gives you a value 1 plus gives you a value 1 so I can say instead of f of 2 I can write 1 last is equal to 1 now coming across to second last f of 1 again f of 1 will be called remember this again f of 1 will be called and this time again the same thing n lesser than equal to 1 return 1 will happen so this guy will return 1 so this guy will be getting 1 so last got 1 second last as well as got 1 so 1 plus 1 gives you 2 so what you got over here is 2 correct now over here this is the case where you will be doing for f of 2 because f of n minus 2 will be 4 minus 2 that's 2 again you will go and call these f of 2's f of 2's will go and call the last one as f of 1 the second last as f of 0 remember the if base condition does not execute so f of 1 will be called it will return 1 f of 0 will be called it will return 0 thereby returning of 1 plus 0 last plus second last thereby this returns 1 so 2 plus 1 gives you 3 thereby f of 4 is printed as 3 because 2 plus 1 is 3 and it returns you 3 that's how the recursion works so if i just keep a very very uh, 
So this is how you can see the recursion, entire recursion call being happening, right? So I hope I hope you have got a fair bit of idea about how recursion calls will be worked. Always remember, yes, always remember if there are multiple recursion calls to be done. If there are multiple recursion calls, this will happen, come back, this will happen, come back, this will happen, come back. That's how recursion calls work. One is ended, then the next comes. One is ended, then the next comes. Before ending the previous recursion, this can never ever execute. So if I if I try to uh, for this particular stuff, yes, for this particular stuff, if I uh, for this particular stuff, if I wish to draw the recursion tree, it so so if you see this, it's in the this level horizontal. So the recursion tree is generally vertical, so you can easily draw it. See, this is the FF4, so you can write FF4. So let's uh, quickly erase this so that I can write it over here. So you can write FF4. Whom did FF4 call? Let's see. FF4 called uh, whom? It called FF3 uh, was here and FF2 uh, was here. So it did call FF3 and it did call FF2, correct? And going forward, FF3 called FF2 and FF1. FF2 called FF1, FF0. But remember one thing in recursion, how does this happen? FF4 has couple of recursion calls, FF3 and FF2. But which one gets executed first? This one gets executed first. So FF3 is executed at the first. For FF3, who are the recursion calls? FF2 and FF1. But who is executed first? FF2. So please execute FF2 first, which is FF1 and FF0. Again, among these both recursion calls, which one is executed first? FF1. So f of 1 indeed returned you a 1, f of 0 returned you a 0. So 1 plus 0, this guy, last plus second last, give you 1. f of 1 returned a 1. So f of 3 got 1 from last, second last got 1. So this returned you 2. Similarly, f of 2 will be done. This gives you 1, this gives you 0. So 1 plus 0 will be 1. So 2 plus 1 will be done, which gets you an ultimate answer of 3. This is how you can draw the recursion tree. Remember this. We will be drawing recursion trees in tougher problems. I can't, like, it is practically impossible to write uh, every time the entire function and show you how it is being done. It's practically impossible to do this. So I will be writing in this fashion going forward. So please, please uh, try to relate the horizontal uh, programmatic call to the vertical recursion tree. It's very important to relate it. It's very simple. FF4, whom does it call? You just have to relate that. FF4 called, called call last and second last. So just relate it second last, last and second last. Try to relate the horizontal with the vertical recursion tree. Okay. I hope that makes uh, sense. So if I try to code this uh, super quick, it'll be like int f of int n. And then I can be like, if n is less than or equal to 1, you can simply return n or else you can say there will be a last of f of n minus 1. There will be a second last of f of n minus 2. And then you can uh, return last plus second last. Correct. And over here you can definitely uh, print f of 4 if you wish to. And this will give you the answer. You see over here you got the answer as 3. Very simple and straightforward. But what about the time complexity? This is a very, very critical thing. Let's understand the time complexity. How many recursion calls did you made for n equal to 4? Let's see. First recursion call. Second recursion call. Third recursion call. Fourth recursion call. Fifth recursion call. Sixth recursion call. Seventh recursion call. Eighth recursion call. Ninth recursion call. It's definitely not four recursion calls. It's way way beyond that correct now if i'm asking you for every n how many recursion calls were you making you'll be like strive i was making couple of recursion calls i will like make sense because for four uh, you made uh, for three and for two it it is not a unidirectional recursion call uh, it's kind of bi-directional where you call a couple of guys so for every n you're calling two guys so for the next n minus one Again, you call two guys. For the next n minus two, again, you call two guys. So for everyone, you're calling two, 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 two. 
so can i say it's like 2 to the power n will be the time complexity not near not exactly why because uh, from 4 you called for 3 and the other one was one lesser than 3 thereby it's not exactly 2 to the power n but you can say it's near about 2 to the power n which is generically known as exponential in nature if you did not understand let's understand by recursion tree see this was the first level this guy called couple of guys correct again this guy called couple of guys so if one guy calls couple and the other guy again calls couple so it's twice into twice into twice got this uh, try to draw recursion trees you'll understand so if every guy is calling twice and it's a like tree type it's going to be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 which is 2 to the power n the only reason it's not like for 4 it isn't like 2 to the power 4 equal to 16 and it is 9 recursion calls the only reason is because from 4 you're calling to 3 and then you're calling it to 2 down level like from 4 you're going to 2 so for every time you're like going to uh, twice down thereby it's not exactly 2 to the power n but you can say it's near about exponential in nature so this can be done using dynamic programming where you can trim down but as of now i'll not teach dynamic programming that's coming next but this should be understandable why it is 2 to the power n okay just in case you still have doubts put that into the comment section put that into the comment section i will definitely reply and yes if you have understood multiple recursion calls please 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 make sure you like this video and if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing please please do consider subscribing and yeah with this uh, let's wrap up this video bye bye take care